go. There's the back. Bringing it up, that's not too bad. Okay. Just, uh, get that to that way. Just so you can hear me. Alrighty, so what are we going to do? We need to grab this body. And we've got that body. We need to get in there and drill those holes. I've got the drill bit too. I've got black hardware. It's got Mr. Glynn's cruel mistress vintage tele pickups, brass saddle, bone nut. Uh, it's all good. Where the weed at? What's going on? Thank you for the follow. Good to see you. Welcome on in. Who? Okay, so that's that guy there. But that's that's to show you that copper looking um, red cedar when it when it really gets polished up, it, it really really looks copperish. Can you guys see my Yeah, that back's going to be sensational. That is so smooth. Very good. Ha! Absolutely. They are drums. They're percussion instruments as well as stringed instruments. They can be used. If you sit, if you watch the old flamenco guys playing, the old Spanish guys, they're doing all that stuff. They're going tippa tapa tippa tippa tum ring 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 tippa tapa tippa tapa ting ting tong ta. So uh, it's all good. Here we go. There's the back. Bringing it up. That's not too bad. Okay. Just uh, get that to that way. Just so you can hear me. Alrighty. So, what are we going to do? We need to grab this body. And we've got that body. We need to get in there and drill those holes. I've got the drill bit too. I've got Black hardware. It's got Mr. Glynn's cruel mistress vintage tele pickups, brass saddle, bone nut, uh, it's all good. Where the weed at? What's going on? Thank you for the follow. Good to see you. Welcome on in. Who? Okay, so that's that guy there. But that's that's to show you that copper looking um, red cedar when it when it really gets polished up, it, it really really looks copperish. Can you guys see my Yeah, that back's going to be sensational. That is so smooth. Very good. Ha! Absolutely. They are drums. They're percussion instruments as well as stringed instruments. They can be used. If you sit, if you watch the old flamenco guys playing, the old Spanish guys, they're doing all that stuff. They're going tippa tapa tippa tippa tum ring 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 tippa tapa tippa tapa ting ting tong ta. Hello guys and girls, how are we going? Welcome on in. Terry, what's going on? Tell me, how are you? Good to see you. Welcome to another episode of the Guitar Show. We've got to work on a neck carve today, so time for Shinto rasps and uh, carve this neck out. Here's the telly. Um, we've got the body shaped with the exception of that little area in there. I need to sand that round to the profile then we glue the cap on i won't be doing that now what we want to do is work on this guy so our neck is ready it fits in there nicely and um, what we need to do is um, get that guy carved to the right profile and then we can worry about putting frets in it uh, and then put the cap on this guy we're getting there quicker than i thought we also have to make a little plate for that guy but i'm going to do that after i cut out the cap for the fox and use some of the spare um, spare cap material to match up that uh, cavity. What's going on? Who else have we got? Terry's here. Tom is here. How are you doing, Tom? Good to see you. Leslie's here as well. Welcome on in, guys and girls. So, 
There she is. Uh, we've got to now carve that clip. So we're going to start the usual process with marking out the transition lines and getting that guy started. <clears throat> Just to show you where we're up to with that body. <clears throat> okay, we've got it all shaped nicely, with the exception of that round. Got to get a round bit in there just to tidy that up. I've cut that section out there. The neck fits in there nicely. There we go. That fits in there. Look, ma, no hands. Uh, of course, it's a little bit high because we've got a good quarter inch of cap to go under there as well. Once that cap's on, that'll be flush to the surface with just the fretboard popping up. We did get the dots in last week. There they are there. We've got to trim those guys down and get them all nice and uh, nice and level. But uh, for now, we're going to start on transition lines and get that carve underway. <clears throat> okay, here we go. First week of audit under your belt. That is a good thing. One down, one to go. That went quick, Terry. It feels like it went quick. Fast as lightning. Very, very frightening. Let me just measure... The truss rod <clears throat> for this guy to get a, a rough indication of where that guy's sitting. Okay. About there is the edge. If we measure that, that is a 17 millimeter neck. That's quite thin. That's very thin. That's no good. We need to go to 20, which is just there. Perfecto. There we go. So we're going to leave about four millimeters between the edge and there, just enough wood to make this look and Make this look and feel good. Let's uh, rule that right across there. I should use a um, I should use a marker pen. Let me use a blue pen. Something I can see a little bit better with. Something darker. Something that works. There we go. Double check this again. That's our limit. We don't want to go down below that that depth in the center. That'll expose the truss rod and that's not a good thing. So there's our truss rod right there. You can see we've got about a quarter inch excess and that'll give it a stable platform to push up against. Okay, do the same on the other side. <coughs> measure once more. Always measure from the edge of the fretboard where it's flush with the truss rod. Max line. We've got our triangle drawn here. We're going to now transition that to there. It sort of goes. I 
But Yeah, we cut that guy out. That guy goes, and that gives us that transition line to get that neck. And there's the bottom of the neck. So that's the transition from the heel. Let me just double check that, make sure I get that right, actually. Yeah, that's got to be... Uh, yeah, that's good. Okay, so we're good there. Uh, I've got to do this end as well, of course. And this is going to be a little bit different. So we'll just run this angle down here. We just generally run that to the center, which is roughly there. We run a, another tangent to that arc there. there okay and now we just round that over a little bit and let's put a little bit of a curve on it like that there's our headstock transition Get a line down here, there's the center line. Perfect. Straight down the middle. We go either side of this guy so we don't touch either side of this guy. We leave that skunk stripe alone. That's where the truss rod is. We will get to it eventually and lower that, but now we need to take these corners off. We're pretty much ready to start with the transition. See, we'll start with the heel end. Put that away. Dana, what's going on? And thank you for the gifted sub. Appreciate you. Thank you for the support. They're working remotely. Terry, there's nothing better than having auditors as far away from you as possible, physically that is. <laughs> oh my God, we're gonna miss Shinto. But Dana can always watch it on the replay. Dana's a replay kind of girl. She likes to watch things on the replay. I know that for a fact. All right. We need to get this guy out of there. So what I do now is I get the rounded rasp, the half round rasp. And I literally take that corner Make a little indentation. Like so, till it touches the line. Do the same on the other side. So, two little half moons, two little crescents. We now take that guide and we run it 
down towards the center line. Like that. Just on the edge there, we leave about a quarter inch and we'll tidy that up, we'll come in closer and get that flush up to that triangle and get a nice, even, symmetrical shape. So Didymus, what is happening? Flying on in, how are you doing guys and girls? So Didymus, what is happening sir? Are you well? Are you good? That's what we like. Meets in the middle. Meets in the middle. And now we angle that and we come closer to the edge of that triangle. Like so. And we hit that edge. hit that triangle we've got that nice and neat now and we can work away and chisel all that out do the same at this end so again we take a take a start with this guy let me just um, finish the transitions here let's mark where that neck stuff ends and we need to go from the edge here That side. Like that, we're going to take all this out take this guy out here again we start with a round to the line Follow that down. Like so. Blend that in with the edges. Bumstead, Marky Mark, what's going on? How are you? Good to see you guys. Welcome on in, Mark. How you been? How's your week? Again, we do the same on this side here.
join those up. There we go. And we've got that basic shape of that volute coming down to the center. Now we can start working on this guy here. Shinto time. Shinto time. We've got to take off that big quarter there. A nice big quarter inch bevel. Okay, we're going to take all that off. That edge has to come off. That edge has to come off. Doesn't take long with the Shinto. We're going to clamp this guy up, up here. Couple of clamps just to hold things in place. Isn't that right, Terry? Like that. Shinto time. We'll use the longer Shinto. There's an there's a 12 inch and a 10 inch. <coughs> Get the 12 on it. Just at 45, get that bevel. those transition lines there just work it gently and blend those in <coughs> that <coughs> excuse me coach wood's quite good at um, it files away nice and easily, and it also is um, dense, so it doesn't fly up and there's no dust particles flying uh, in the air as much as I'd expect, uh, say from something like Queensland maple, for example, or uh, which is a bit more fibrous, a bit more susceptible to the breeze. The breeze! Same deal here. Same deal, guys and girls. Blend that little transition in. Take that corner off of the file. And then Shinto the rest. More clamps. Terry, no more clamps. More clamps.
clamps. She's obsessed with clamps. <clears throat> Where's Lisa? She's here. Lisa, are you happy with Shintoing? You must be happy. What? Nothing better to do on a Friday night than Shinto, I say. <laughs> Okay, there's pass number one. Pass number two now is where we're up to. We gotta run another quarter inch in here. down to there Like so, get rid of that guy. Let's go. Keep going, as they say. Keep on trucking. All right, let's get going. Every day is a good day for Shintoing, agreed. You'll be using the Shinto tomorrow, Willie. Awesome. There is a Shinto club. It's better than the fight club. Big bevel. A lot of transition lines going on here. There we go. Just smoothen that out. Okay. 
Okay, flip it over. Hit the other side. This is pass number two. Pass two. How many do we need, Terry? How many passes do we go with the Shinto before we hit the thicknesser and get the thickness right? That's a trick question. Two hundred and forty-eight. Holy smokes, Terry! What are you talking about? Are you crazy? Are you crazy? Some would say yes. Absolutely you are. As crazy as a two bob watch, as we say here. Two bob being 20 cents. Crazy as a two bob watch. Okay, we're looking good. Big chamfer on there, big bevel. The count. Three rounds of Shinto. Ooh, ah, ah, ah. <clears throat> last round of Shinto roughing and then we can start doing scraping and other things sanding and scraping what have you
just adjusting the transitions now. Adjusting the transitions. Okay. Go to the depth that we need it to be at. Okay, adjust the transitions here. See that's starting to starting to get a little bit narrower there, a little C shape. Starting to get that shape that we want right in there. <coughs> chipped a little bit of that. Let me just glue that down. <coughs> Excuse me. A little bit of glue there. Take that edge in there. I'll just tape that little corner down. That'll keep it from breaking off and that'll dry off. And we won't know that there's a chip there. Just want to save that little corner. Okay. The problem with these rasps is they do bite and sometimes you get a little chip here and there, but you've just got to sand it out or, or fill it back. Um, okay, we're good to go with the so we've got the depth there, we've got to get this guy going. It's right up to pretty much the boundary now. That skunk stripe down the middle. We've got to bevel all that away and that away. Okay, let's get going. Cracking, let's get cracking as they say humid in Sydney. We've had a little bit of heat in the last couple of days. It's only about 26 Celsius, but it's probably about 80% humidity. It's very sticky. Go.
Mav in the house. Mav, what's going on? Mav the Mav the Mav. Welcome. That's it. You're an accounting brain, all right? That pretty much tells me everything I need to know. Terry is a math geek. That's why we like her. We can count on Terry. Ha! See what I did there? Tom would be proud of that one. Okay, Tom. Good. I wasn't reading. I missed it. But uh, you can never have too many of those ones, let me tell you. And coming from you, I expect at least three or four every session. V now. Big V style neck. Okay, we're doing okay. Doing okay. Yeah, you can see that's starting to take shape now. Doesn't fit through there, of course, we've got to get that down. But we're starting to take shape, which is good. Keep going. Nice grain starting to show up. There's a big vein of grain through there, so that when we polish this guy up, it's going to be a pretty neck. It looks like a neck. Starting to, it's a bit of a fat neck. But we're getting there.
three passes we've got the thicknessing to go now and when we get this down to the thickness the thickness that we want we are then going to give it one more pass and round it over start doing some scraping and some sanding and we're almost there Take a break. I'm just going to get some water and I'll be back in a sec. We're starting to get there. We're getting the basic transitions done. We've got that sort of semi-round, still a baseball bat. Um, yeah, starting to look like a neck, but we've got a long way to go down in here. We're going to cut away now some of this thickness and get it down another half inch. And then we'll have it down to about 20 millimeters or just three quarters of an inch or so. And that should be, at the first fret, should be pretty much the thickness we want to stay on. And then we're going to scrape and round that and profile it get it close to the right shape. Let me have a drink. Cheers, big ears. He's looking at you, kid. Ah, you're buffering. I'm not buffering. That's a good. No problem here. Drop frames. Uh, 2%. Not really a lot. Should be okay. You had to reload. Fair enough. Are we good now? Excellent. Thank you, Bib Bumstead. Always up there for a cheer. Our Mark, he's always raising his glass. Okay, so we've got to go. This guy with the thickness now, we're going to move to the bench. <coughs> it's going to get that thickness down a little bit. Let's see how we do that. Right. Grab our truss rod again. Let's remark where we think that line is. I think I've got it there, but double check it. Double check. Double check. Yeah, it's about right. Okay, that's where I've got it. mark the bare minimum and then we're going to take it an eighth of an inch in to there nothing lower than that 
and then we've got some legs to scrape as well. It's going to give us at least probably three to six millimeters of meat to play with. Yep. Okay, let's give that a go. Let's uh, cut that down to size. I'm going to use the small one. For this activity, I'm just going to basically take it right down. To those lines. there so that's how much we're taking off you can see that's a good quarter inch of height and that'll get it down to that guy there about 23 without the scraping so we've got three to six to play with we'll take three off gets it down to about 20 to 21 just where we want it millimeters the baby cuts. It cuts like a knife. It cuts like a knife. Like that. Once we finish pro thicknessing this, we'll do one more v, one more big be bevel, and then scrape. Okay, give me a second, guys. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, there we go. Let's carry on. Karen Day, what is going on?
Missy, we're, carving, we're carving a neck, Karen. You can see us carving a neck. That's what we're doing. What is happening? Mario! Hey, everybody, look, it's Mario! It's a combination between Super Mario Brothers and Sesame Street. What is going on, Karen Day? Tell me, how was your week? Everybody follow that lady. Everybody follow Karen Day. Stalk her, follow her to the shopping center, the mall, the mall follow her out to the bars, follow her everywhere. Follow her on Twitch too. I'm glad it's Friday, absolutely. It's Saturday here, so I'm even gladder. Ladder. It's all about method, I guess, and process. I've got this process down. It's not, it's not uh, inefficient. There's a little bit of, of elbow grease, but it isn't not efficient. It's, it's pretty good. I can knock a neck out in, in an hour and a half. You know? you know, it take me that long to program a CNC or longer. If I was doing this by machine, yeah, that's a good thickness. Yes, we'll be stalking Hank, because Karen will still be there, and she'll be doing her thing. And thank you very much for the resub too, Karen. I appreciate you for that. Oof. Sanding. Everybody go to Hank's and bring your sandpaper with you. It's a sand sanding party. I couldn't get on to Hank this week. I don't know if we're having a rage, sorry, not a rage, a rant stream tomorrow. I want one. I don't know if he's available, but that's okay. We will one day. Saturday night Sammy party at Hanks. Is he on at the moment? I am not a married guy and that is another place you will find me. This is Home Depot. <laughs> Home Depot, the place to go to find your married guys. That's the commercial. That's the TV commercial. Welcome to Home Depot, our hi-fi, what is it, high fidelity, low fidelity, and infidelity specialists. The beach, let's go to the beach. Come to the Sydney beaches. Come to Bondi. No, Bondi's crap. Let's go to a better beach than Bondi. Come to Nam Bucker Heads. Terry, I want you to do some homework and everybody else out there, Nam Bucker, N-A-M, B-U, double C-A, Nam Bucker Heads. Write it down, type it up, 
Terry. Nam Baka. N A M B U W C A. Nam Baka. Heads. Go look it up. Willie, go look it up. You'll want to book a flight tomorrow. I'm telling you now. Stay at the guest house called The Riverside. Beautiful couple that run it. It's an old school 1800s bed and breakfast. Great views on the balcony of the river. The ocean's five, five yards the other way. It's the place to be. I went up there this Christmas. It was nice. Or well, last Christmas, I should say. Right now, current day, get on it. <laughs> That's it. It was a uh, the town's first major. What's going on there? Low battery. What's happening there? I'm going to lose power. <gasps> I'm going to lose power. No. There. Oh, good. I was going to lose power. I didn't realize that I'd lost my power cord. Maybe that's why it was buffering earlier on. Ah. See, now you want to go. You all have to come. You all have to go there. I'll be the guy wearing the, the big floppy beach sombrero with my fishing rod and buddy next to me. There's a really good pizza joint just across from the hotel. They make lovely cocktails and fantastic pizzas. I'm telling you, it's on for young and old. Post the link. Karen, post the link. Terry, post the link. Put that URL up there. Everybody get to Nambaka Heads right now. It's about a five, six, seven hour drive from my place up the coast. Beats the crap out of Sydney beaches, let me tell you. We're almost there, guys and girls. Let me flip that guy over. We've done about 12 inches. We've got about four to go. Oof. There's a bump there. Let's sort that out. where um, I've convinced everybody to um, get on a plane and go to Nambucca Heads. And you can probably drive down and meet us there. It's not too far from your part of the woods. Sharpies. Dana's a Sharpie freak. She's addicted to Sharpies. Sharpie, Sharpie, Sharpie. Texters. scrape yet we're almost there fix that transition that glued up fix that heel up there
almost there. Coconuts. There's no, no coconuts on the beaches here, uh, but there will be coconuts at the bar. Dana, for you, coconut girl. Oof. Okay, this last inch to go, and then we'll scrape. We'll do one more rasp down to the fretboard, get this last bevel off, get a nice V in there, and then scrape it round. So we start off, we're going to start off with a pointy, very pointy, very falling away here, very pointy V shape, and then we're going to scrape that V channel or that V peak off the top and get a nice shape. We're almost there. Okay, last bit here. inch Whew. yes exactly Okay, we're done. We've thickness this out to a nice thin 23. We've got to now scrape a couple of millimeters off that, get it down to 20, 21, and we're good to sand. Oh. Leaves. Okay. Let's have another drink. I'm sweating like a. I'm sweating like a one arm bricklayer in Beirut. Cheers, big ears. Here's looking up your old address. Okay. So, starting to get there now. All right, so we've got to round that over now and get that nice C shape and then get it down to size. It's almost there. Orby would probably like this. It's a nice baseball batty feel, but we want to get it really nice and round and slim line now. Okay, back to the bench. I'm going to mark this center line again. No man's land. What happened to that camera? Let's try that again. Badoing. There we go. I gotta say badoing. It sounds like it looks like it doesn't want to work unless I go badoing. So we've got to fix the transitions up, but this is no man's land. Let's stay away from no man's land. That's no man's land, guys and girls. That's the truss rod. We don't want to go into there. We want to fade all this away. All that's got to go aggressively, aggressively. And we've got to go all the way down pretty much to 
just above the fretboard there. I'm going to go pretty much all the way down and then scrape the rest. It's, uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Take all this massive big guy out here and give that a nice big chunky bevel and then scrape it nice and round. Let's mark this end. Okay, we're good there. And of course we like all that. Okay, let's uh, let's do that. Let's go all the way. Let's go all the way to there. So let's clamp this guy up with Terry's clamps. Terry's clamps. Come on down to Terry's clamps. Well, we we will make sure you get thirty-five clamps at least. If there was a store named after Terry for clamps, it'd be called Terry's Clamps. You don't move, you don't, you don't leave with at least a dozen clamps under your arm in your uh, shopping basket. At least a dozen, an even dozen. We call it's called a Terry dozen. That's probably thirty-eight. Is a Terry's dozen. If fourteen is thir if thirteen is a baker's dozen, then thirty-eight clamps is a Terry dozen. But she's good at math, so maybe I got it wrong. Am I right? Am I wrong? I'm probably wrong. Doesn't matter. Let's get on with it. Okay, let's get this guy sorted. I'm going to grab the big guns. Two hundred and forty-eight clamps. That's the magic formula, Willie. That's the number. Okay. So now we're going to get this guy really aggressively V'd up, V'd up. So I'm going all the way down to the fretboard pretty much. I'll scrape the rest round. I just want to get a nice bevel there, a nice big peaky bevel. Good. Let's get down to this side. Woo. You can see it's starting to take shape now. It's starting to get rounded over. We'll scrape that soon and we'll get that really nice profile. 
got to tidy up these uh, ends as well. Okay, let's do this end. She's a hot one, Mario. She's a hot one, Mario. Mario, she's a hot one. What I say to you, she's a hot one. <sighs> Cheers, big ears. Here's to zero humidity. Because at the moment it's 90%. Let's catch up with the chat for a bit. Give me a break. Let's have a break for a minute. Where are my glasses gone? Glasses, where are you? I need to see. I have to find my glasses. I'll be back. Just a reminder, here's the Les Paul that we we're working on. So there's the front, six coats. Don't look good. Nifty, what do you think? Back, five coats. Starting to shine now. It's shining. Starting to shine. Starting to shine. So we've got to do another coat on that later on. Once I get through this neck, and I've had enough of the neck. <clears throat> Mario, you like? Mario, you like? Very nice. Okay. Enough of a break. Back to this. Let's do one more side. He starts scraping. <sighs> Rage is in the house, is he? Where is he? Oh, I got the flu. No good, man. That's all right. You'll be fine. Push through, my friend. Push through. <clears throat> There's a bit of it going around. Lots of flus, lots of bugs, lots of super bugs. No wonder. Lots of super bugs. Lots of radiation poisoning, too, from those towers. A lot of people I know have been uh, diagnosed with radiation poisoning, which ironically has similar symptoms to... The good old vid. Isn't that funny? I've always wondered about that. But yes, there's a little bit going around and uh, we've all sort of been... Did you get well soon, mate? That's all I can say. Yeah, respiratory. A lot of people are coughing up their lungs, Terry. A lot of people are coughing up their lungs. It's not great. Okay. What have we got to do now? We've got to do this side. Am I mad? Are you crazy? Okay. Big bevel. Then we scrape and finish. My hands are actually sore from this rasp. I should put tape on the end there as well because sometimes my finger rubs against the small teeth and there's, uh, I think this finger is about an inch shorter than this finger now. So, yeah, I probably did wear away half of it. You will. You'll get stronger. Absolutely, you will. Put on your big boy pants, man. This is the time. Put on your big boy pants. You can do it. It sucks to feel like that though. It's just that tiredness and that ache and fevery and uh, a little bit, you know, sniffly or throat. The throat's a bit raw. It's a terrible feeling. Detoxing, that's your body detoxing, you know. We just get too much of a buildup of crap. We gotta get rid of it. And that's what happens. OK, 
Okay. We've pretty much gone right down to where we want to. I've got to scrape the rest now. I've got to fix this mother over here. Grab our half rasp, but I've got to transition this little guy. Bring it on the bench so you guys get a better look at that. So you can see there's a little bit of a, a bump there from the, the thinning out or the thicknessing of that. So I've got to just blend that in and I just use the round file here and just blend that guy in. Why the round file? Because I've got to follow that little concave profile there. Tidy up the transition lines. Sort of right down to there. And then uh, hit this guy this way and blend that in. Blend that in. Blend that guy in. there. And there it is. And we blended that in, as you can see right there. See how it just falls away? Just falls away from the top, just goes, Burr. there's no more big step. It's blended in and it just slopes down onto that center line. We're still gonna scrape and work that some more. We'll do this heel then, and then we'll get the scrapers on here and get this to shape. <clears throat> broccoli cheese soup, awesome. Nature's cure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit the broccoli, man, that's good stuff. Also Brussels sprouts I heard are really good too. If you're having spinach, it's good, but make sure it's cooked. Raw spinach, not good. Cooked spinach, very good. <clears throat> okay, same deal here. We want to just feather that and just blend that in. We'll start with a curve here. Get that to blend. And that's why I left about an eighth or a, a sixteenth of an inch, just to wear that away and just to fade that down a little bit with. With the file and get it right down to where it needs to be.
and there we have that a, a nice steady transition stepping down to that. Now we can scrape this and get this nice and straight, nice and round, get any bumps out of there. We'll use our scrapers for that. I'm going to pop it back up here. Scraper! Here are our scrapers. I use the straight edge first. down to the fretboard, take those sharp edges away. Kangaroo tail, it is very good. Uh, Mav, it's a little bit on the lean side. Kangaroo meat is very good. Uh, medium rare, never any more cooked than that because it'll just sit tough. It's a lot like venison in that it's lean, so it's probably not ideal for a diet. You should ideally have red meat that's fatty or marbly uh, because you need the fat to counter the uh, insulin spike from the protein. Um, protein acts like carbohydrates and sugar. It gives you an insulin spike. The fat levels that out. It's also good for your brain. So fatty meat's better. Kangaroo tail is very good. Uh, not as fatty as you want it to be, but it is delicious. So try it. Absolutely try it. Medium rare. Or even a stew. Like oxtail. Which will be fattier, by the way. Just scraping the edges off that, the roughness. Going to give, we're going to do a transition check in a minute and see what that shape's like. It's a bit rough as guts down here, so... Yeah, no, it might be a little bit chewy. It's probably not as chewy as oxtail. Depends how you cook it, Mario. Let it stew for about four or five hours on a slow cook. It'll come out like Turkish delight. It'll be soft as butter. This is a great scraper because it gives us the right profile. Helps me take the edges off where they need to be taken off. That's a nice neck. That's a really nice neck. It's not too thick, not too thin. It's just right.
Okay, that's taken that off there, so that's pretty good. I'll flip that over and check the uh, straightness there and I'm going to work on. Get rid of the lumps here first, then I'm going to just fine tune it. And then we're pretty much done for the day on this neck, anyway. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's really good. That's nice. Starting to come together. Starting to come together. It's just Geo hitting the horn on the car and I don't know why. Okay, I'll sand the rest. Let me check the edge here and see how straight we are. Pretty straight. A bit of a bump here. Okay, let's check the edges. That looks straight. Oh, that is pretty good. It's a bit there, I'm just gonna sand that. Grab some 240, put my mask on because it kicks up a little bit of dust. Whew. Let's catch up with the chat while we're at it. Put my glasses on so I can read what's going on. Brain must be yucky, brain is unbelievably good. Sheep's, sheep's brains are great. You have things like lamb's fry and uh, brain fritters. They're awesome. They taste delicious. If they cook right, they taste delicious. You wouldn't even know what you're eating. How is he? He's doing well, Leslie. He's at home now, getting ready to um, work for a few months and then head off to, hopefully, hopefully the plan is to get off to U the UK, either Manchester area or Birmingham um, for the minor leagues there. So we'll see how it goes. That's the plan, but uh, could be six months away. Start of next season, maybe.
Posture check. Good idea, big bumsters. Let's do the posture check. Mark knows what he's talking about. We're going to stand up straight. We're going to push our chin in. I've got this mask on. I'm not going to take it off. I'm going to roll my shoulders out. I'm sweating right across everywhere because it's bloody hot. Yeah, it should work out okay. The beauty is he's, he's able to get a two-year visa, Leslie, so he can work there if he needs to. I mean, he's a barista. He works in hospitality as well. He does a little bit of copywriting, so he's got a bit of a bit of versatility up his sleeve. Yeah, it will, mate. It will. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate that. I feel pretty good, though. I've been doing my stretches regularly, so I, I feel pretty good. Okay, let's stand this guy. Okay, let's check the profile. Just the profile on that. Oh, I'm not going to sand anymore. I'm done with sanding today and sc scraping. So that's it for today from a neck perspective. Let's just check the profile and see how far out we are. We're pretty close, I feel. We're pretty close. Okay, we're not too bad. Let me just get that right. Pretty, it's a nice little C. Pretty even, very even. There's no bumps there. It's pretty, it's pretty good. It's almost there. With a little bit more sanding, it'll be just right. I'm going to check the depth of that in a minute, the thickness through there. Check the back. Of course, the back is a little bit wider, and we have a little bit of lopsidedness on one side. You can see it's a little bit lopsided higher here. So I'm going to scrape a little bit more there. Um, off stream but um, 
I'll just check the thickness of this guy and then we'll have a quick look at how that turned out. That looks pretty good. You can see that there, it actually is a neck now, that's not bad. Alright, there she is. Transition, transition. Okay, that's what we can do in two hours, just under two hours, one hour 55. Carve that guy up, let's measure that. It's probably maybe on the thicker side, we can scrape a little bit more. But uh, let's check it. At first fret, it's 23. So, yeah, we can take a little bit more off. 23 there, 23 there, 24. It's pretty consistent. It's pretty consistent. It's nice and consistent. Pretty much the same thickness all the way through. A little bit more on the back, just by a millimeter or so. But that's okay because it does get wider. And you want it to taper a little bit like that. But that's um, that's getting there. 23. We've still got finishing to do. It'll get down to 21, no problem. Um, I'll scrape, scrape that. But that's uh, that's coming up okay. All right, ladies and gents. There's our neck. You can see that that is now a neck. Okay, we pop that into the body. There's our body. Uh, we won't be on Monday. I'm going to clamp this guy up. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time this afternoon just rounding over and getting rid of those edges and preparing that little cutaway. And then it's in a, everything else is sanded and smooth and ready to go. We're ready to put the, the cap on that on Monday. Um, I might even put the cap on tomorrow and then we'll be dry by Monday and we can cut it out and route it and get the uh, pickup pockets in there uh, for this guy. So let's um, pop the neck in and have a look at that. Okay, that's nice. Perfect transition. At the back, you can see there's our neck. Okay. Starting to look like a guitar now. Our transition is lovely and centered at the back. You can see the transition there. It's even on the heel there, straight down the middle. Um, and there's the headstock transition at the top there. So that's looking nice. And you can see the color blends in nicely with that sap wood from that poplar. It's a really nice color. If we were to spray that with a little bit of water, just a little bit, it'll raise a little bit of grain. I'm going to scrape some of that back, but you can see the color of that guy. Okay, it gets, that's the color that you're going to have, and that's going to blend in nicely with oiled with this guy here it sort of flows nicely and of course the front looks really good that's a striking uh, striking fretboard that's a nice nice fretboard again with a little bit of uh, danish oil that'll not danish oil um, true oil no, not true oil ah lemon oil i'm going to keep it dry i'm not putting any lacquer on that one it's a really nice neck it's not too thick it's pretty good i'm happy with that so um that should turn out good let's uh put this away we'll get the les paul out give that a coat needs a coat. So I've got to clean up here first before we do that. So let me just hang this guy up. <clears throat> so, more cowbell. Oof. Oof. The lovely trip I had. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, everyone. That's two hours on the MM clock. Absolutely. Whew. Ah, stain grade, Rage. It's, uh, it's a stain grade body. The grain is actually really cool. When I put some oil on there, that'll really... You'll see how the rings are really pronounced, prominent it's on the front. Uh, you won't see the front because we've got the cap on it, but the back is going to come up. Schmicko. Yep, I need a sand inside the horn. Yep, that's the one. Nick is looking good. It's starting to get there. Aloha, Maui Lynn. What are you up to, Messi? Welcome on in. Lynn's in the house, everybody. Big shout out for Lynn and big round of applause. The lady is here. How are you, Lynn? How are you doing? Hope you're well. Let me pack up some of this crap. And then we'll get some uh, get some stain on here. 
pop these rasps away. The Shintos did the job again, ladies and gents, of course. The Shintos did the job. How good were they? Did you catch that, Lynn? Hanging up there. Telly's getting capped. And that's the neck we carved today. This is the body. This is the cap for the body. It's called the fox. And you can see why it's called the fox. So I'll give you some color on that. Let's put some color on that guy and see. Remind you guys what that looks like. Some people say it's a badger. Some people say it's a rat. I think it's a fox. Rage would love this detail. Look at that fox. You know what? It is a badger, isn't it? <laughs> the badger. <laughs> Yay, Lynn, she shouts out. Excellent. Oh, good, Lynn. I'm glad. Hang in there, kid. Hang in there. That's the way to do it. We're all rooting for you. That's that guy there. It looks like a demon. No, Rage. You're the demon. That looks like a praying mantis. Now it looks like a badger. It's got this badger stripe, like a skunk. A demon. Demon fox badger, that's the one. <laughs> sweet people here, we're all sweet. We're all sweet, we're like candy. <laughs> Yeah, um, Lynn, it's going to be nice. I think it's going to really, really be nice. We're going to put a P90 pickup in the in the neck and a humbucker in the bridge. We're not going with a traditional ashtray bridge. We're going to put a little stop tail bridge um, <coughs> or hard tail bridge, I should say. Um, we're trying to expose as much of this real estate as we can. So we don't want big, um, big bridges or anything fancy. We're just going to keep it to... A pickup here, a pickup there, a little bridge here, and we're done. Three controls, and uh, that's it. We want to expose as much of this beautiful, beautiful stuff. Uh, this is camphor laurel. It smells like tea tree. It smells like camphor oil, if you've ever smelt that camphor. It's beautiful. I think you use mothballs are made of camphor, if I'm not mistaken. It does smell a bit mothbally, but more natural, I guess. Um, it's, a it's a noxious weed in Australia. We can cut... This stuff's growing like wildfire, and we can cut it down and burn as much as we want and get rid of as much as we want. Um, it's a weed, but look at the beautiful samples you get. It's, uh, it's beyond belief. Beyond belief. Let's get the Les Paul out. Let me just change this over. Get the Les Paul out and give that a coat. side here clean it up no dust there that's a clean one pop our less pull on there for those that haven't seen it I'll give you a look see we've got six coats on the front six coats on the front um, wipe one poly needs a couple more five on the back we're about to put six on the back you see it's starting to shine now um, that's mahogany and that's maple with a beautiful honey burst. Um, that color, I love that color. It's really cool. Let's uh, pop this down here and uh, get this back done. Another coat on the back. The finishing towel. It's another one that I've got. I've used these old towels. I've got a couple in the place. I either I use them mainly just to rest the wood so there's no scratchy material. Um, the other one was dusty. I just took it in the other room and, and threw this one down, got the other one out. So uh, I've got about three or four. Yeah, I just use them just to rest the timber on so there's no... This stuff is nice, the sponge, but, you know, you get little bits of fibre caught in it. It could scratch the surface, especially when I'm finishing. So I always use these towels um, that are a lot softer. I'll go wash these after I finish as well. I keep them pretty much clean. Don't worry about the stains on them. They're not coming out because they're glue marks, but um, it, does, it does keep it... I mean, it's just everything I can do to protect it. That bloody maple looks good too. That maple looks really good. Do you like that rage, that maple? 
Is that good or what? I love that binding. That is awesome. That turned out really good. I had to thickness that down and I had to hand cut it and hand thickness it and bend it by hand uh, with a hot uh, with a hot uh, pipe and a steam and uh, the, the heat gun on the pipe and uh, it worked it worked fine that's that's turned out really good uh, UB I works what's going on how you doing gonna give this a good little wipe down just a little bit of spirit not much in actual fact I'm not going to use spirit I'm just going to use a cloth I'm going to get a clean cloth. Also got these little guys to do. Now this guy's pretty much finished. The matching block that goes in there. Okay, that's pretty much finished. I do have to sand the edges, there's a little bit of lacquer on there, so that'll get hammered into there. So that one is uh, is done. We're still working on the cover. It's almost there, it's starting to shine. So we're going to give that another coat and uh, it'll be even closer. Firstly, we're going to do this guy. I want to grab some 400. Sorry, not 400, I want to grab some... 1200, wherever that is, there it is. Give that a light, just a light scuff. Just taking off any bubbles, any hair. There's nothing there that I can see, but I do want to just give that a light rub. Um, Orby, I'm thinking about talking to Orby about him. Yeah, Mario, I'd love Greg to make me a set. I mean, of course, I'll, you know, I'm going to pay for them, but um, I don't expect anything for free. Um, but yes, Orby and I will probably work on something. I do want him to give me a really sexy neck P90 and a really sexy humbucker. Uh, just something different. I mean, I do love my, uh, my pickups from Mr. Glynn, but I do want to support Orby as well. Uh, he's a good guy and he needs support as well. And uh, he does make a pretty good product. So I'm dying to try it out. What do you think? I, I reckon I'm, I'm, I'm dying to try it out. I'm, I'm excited. Woohoo! I'm excited. Okay, that guy's done. I'll grab, um, I'm going to put this away. Okay, that's good to go. Let's grab our poly. Vibe on, vibe it on, vibe it off. Always give it a little stir. I don't shake it violently, but I just give it a little, little stir. Just a little swizzle. little poly container here so as much as I need in there okay get some gloves on or one glove at least Quick coat. We go nice and light. 
Okay, nice and light. Pad this guy up like a brush, nice and round. Get a nice good even coat in there, let it sort of sit and just brush that on. Nice and thin. Like that. Just let that settle in, we'll just spread that out. Don't worry about streakiness, that will settle. Just worry about hair and bubbles. This stuff's pretty good though. It's, um, I find there's less bubbles here in poly than I do get in oil when I try and do a gloss oil finish. It's a bit bubblier, if that's such a word, bubblier. Is that a word, Terry? Bubblier. Michael Bubble, not Michael Buble, Michael Bubble. run there, let's spread that out. I don't over I don't over wipe it because it just starts wiping most of it off. I just wipe it in and just spread it using a brush technique like this. I do start nice and light when I do the first three or four coats and then I wipe the first three or four coats off after about three or four minutes. But uh, now as I As I apply the final coat, or the last few coats, I tend to uh, not wipe it off, I just leave it on and let it settle. Um, again, it's not too thick a coat, it's just nice and controlled. I check in the light, make sure I haven't missed any spots. settle. Okay. Check that in the light, looks good. Bit of a run through there. Dry there. It's better. Okay. There we go. Leave the sides. I've got to sand those separately. I just want to build up the back at the moment. Check that for runs. Looks good. Looks good. No runs. It's all good. Okay, this guy here. Just a little bit of a little bit of a dab. He's shiny as now, he's looking really good. Heavy quilt on this guy. There we go. It's looking beautiful, looking pretty. Move that guy to the other room. Give you guys a look at that guy. It's starting to shine now. I'll let that dry. I'm getting there. The other side's looking pretty good too. That's six. Six and six now. We've got to do two more coats on each side and we're done. I'm going to go with eight coats. I think that's enough. Ribbon mahogany looks so good when you, um, it looks so good. The grain is magnificent. The grain is nice. It's a beautiful grain. Both the, uh, the ribbon grain on the back and the flame is really cool. Uh, no, Mario, no, I'm going to leave it glossy, man. I'm going to leave it glossy. It's going to sort of, um, I like poly, it tends to wear in nicely, 
it doesn't thin out like nitro does. Um, I find that it just wears and it, it buffs up nicely. I mean, if I flatten it out, it's only going to polish up as I use it or as it's used uh, when you rub against it. So I'm going to leave it as it is without buff. Uh, you know, I'm not, I don't want to buff it to a high, high gloss. I just want to leave it polyed. Um, so it looks semi-gloss to, to gloss, but not super high um, candy gloss. But um, because that's hard to get that finish with my facilities. I don't, I mean, if I wanted a high, high candy gloss, I'd send it to a spray painter and get him to put nitro, you know, nitrous on it. Not nitrous, um, nitro on it. <clears throat> oh, Lena, thank you for saying so. It's not, it's not really my craftsmanship. It's just a bit of patience and a little bit of know-how and lots of advice from people. And I like to listen to people that know a lot more than I do. So, <clears throat> Rage, you big guy. <laughs> Thank you for saying so, man. I appreciate it. Uh, but um, yeah, um, Orbi is a very, very, very good um, tech and a very good mechanically and electrically inclined guy. He's a freak. He makes some really good gear and I'm hanging to get some pickups from him. Um, I think, Rage, did you ever get pickups from Orbi? I know you got pickups from Jared. It's not a sin, Mario, no. I have some from Orbiter. Yep. Are they good? Have you have you have you put them in or are you still waiting to install them? And Maui Lin, thank you for the gifted sub to to uh, works, to iWorks. You are fantastic and your support has always been appreciated. Thank you, Lin. You're you're marvelous. Uh tell us in the P90s. The P90s are smoking. Excellent. That's what I want to hear. I know his P90s are something else. Um the one thing I like about Mr. Glynn's P90s is he makes the old-fashioned uh, soap bars and dog ears, but he also makes, makes them in a humbucker size, the mini P90s, uh, that look like a humbucker, except they've just got one row of magnets through the middle, um, or one one row of pole pieces, I should say, or screws through the middle. Um, they're, um, they're phenomenal when you just want to keep it looking like a humbucker. In actual fact, the... Um, the Viking metal guitar that I made for that guy who is loving it at the moment. He sent me an email the other day and said he is smoking that thing up. Um, it is roaring and heavy as. He's got, I think, drop B tuning on it now. He's got like really big strings on it. And it's really dark and deep, and, but it really cuts through. The neck pickup in that is a, is a humbucker size P90 and it's a hot one and it sounds mean. It growls low like a... And... Um, and uh, the, the humbucker is really bright, but really hot as well. So you get lots of tonality there. He does do a good hot, but I'm hanging, hanging to find out and get a, my hands on some of Orby's um, pickups because he's magnificent. He's a great, great tradesman. He's an awesome tech. He does some great stuff. I'm just going to see who's on, guys and girls, and I'm going to probably try and see if I can get over there. Anyone prefer anyone for me to, to, uh, oh, by the way, guys and girls, did you hear that Matt Burroughs had his last stream on Thursday? Did you catch his last stream? DJ6 is on. Let's go to DJ6. Okay, we can do that. Um, I'll do that while, uh, while I wait for you guys to respond. Yeah, so, yes, my, yeah, poor old Matt, he's gone. Well, he's not gone. He's gone on to other things. Um, Raid, who are we raiding? DJ6? Nothing. He's, uh, he's streamed for the last time on Twitch, according to him. He's focusing on YouTube and he's um, focusing on his live gigs and he's, uh, he's getting a bit of work. So I think he's just going to let the streaming go. DJ SYX. I hope that's right. Yeah, good for him. Yeah, and there we go. We got it. Okay, guys and girls. Hey, listen, we're going over to catch some DJ music. I want you guys to have a smoking Friday night. Have fun. Enjoy it. Have a great weekend as well. I'll be back on Monday, so give me a couple of days, and I'll see you then, guys and girls. I'll see you later. Be good. Love you all. Take it easy.